From our inception, the Choctaw people have been hunters and fishermen. Up until recently, we've enjoyed a hunting and fishing compact with the state to provide licenses for tribal members at a low cost. Unfortunately, the compact was not renewed. I sat down with Ty Baker, Senior Director of Environmental Protection Services, at Hot Shots Coffee to discuss what the transition from compact to exercising our sovereignty truly entails. For me, the, the hunting and fishing compact was a, a huge success in my opinion because we felt like, well, we will help the state because if we grow our tribal members to become hunters and fishermen like we always used to be. And us entering into that and providing, um, you know, licensees of, as Choctaw citizens to the to the state, that turn or gave them a lot of federal money to use for conservation purposes. And that's such an important resource for southeastern Oklahoma, not only to as a, a staple of sustenance, but you know, recreational values mm -hmm. and economic values are all dependent on that. Why would if we have the sovereign right to have hunting and fishing, why would we need to do a compact? I think it comes down to, to re resources. That was a huge administrative burden that we you know, would have had to enter into. And so what did we give them? Well, we gave them license e holder numbers. They were able to turn that into more money uh, leveraged through the federal government to continue those conservation practices. You know, we understood the, the, the grounds which we were playing and, you know, the compact was working out for us. So, you know, we didn't make that decision. So uh, we're not moving forward with the compact because uh, of political reasons, I guess. But, you know, I made that commitment whenever I felt like Governor Stitt called my hand to say he's going to no longer honor this compact. And I was like, okay, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do hunting and fishing because we believe it's an inherent right. We're going to exercise 100% sovereignty. However, I feel like I'm giving up a little bit of the community support and what I mean by that, because now we, we're not going to get those federal dollars that's going to help the conservation and help, help protect the fish in the lakes and the so on. We're going to have to commit dollars to staffing that now to make sure that we protect our streams and we protect our wildlife and all those types of things. But I think it's going to be a struggle as we move forward and what is that cost and, and what does it need to, to, to be. I'm excited nonetheless. Uh, we get to uh, build on our sovereignty, but as you've said, that's going to take resources. And we're not going at it alone. We've got uh, partners, uh, you know, the college, um, the federal government has, has resources for us. And we've got a lot of people at Choctaw Nation that already understand a lot about uh, conservation and biology, and uh, we're prepared to move forward with that. So it's, it's an exciting time, but really the work is about to begin for Choctaw Nation. Now, the Choctaw Nation, we have our own official hunting and fishing code, and we do have requirements. It's our law within our reservation that we have to comply with. So now, since we're doing our own hunting and fishing, are you gonna continue exercising that right as a tribal member? You know, we'll be out there and we'll be exercising our right, but we'll be uh, hunting and fishing under the regulation of the Wildlife Code from Choctaw Nation. You know, we established our codes, council approved those. So we've got laws that Choctaw tribal members are gonna have to recognize and follow. We've made those very much like the states, so it's not gonna be anything, you know, too foreign for them. And- uh, Are we gonna be able to fish anywhere we want? Fish anywhere you want. Now, don't go to the reservation chief. or outside of the reservation. We're just looking at the Choctaw Nation reservation right now. Uh, if you go outside of that, I guess you'll need to buy a state license. Well, of course, right now, you know, I'm working with the, the other chiefs and, and Governor Anatubby. And, and what we're trying to do is an intergovernmental agreement amongst the five tribes anyway to, to begin with so that we can hunt and fish, which would allow you to, to use your tribal membership card in the Cherokee Nation or in the Chickasaw Nation. So that's something that we've always been about is partnering you know, I mean, we're still going to partner with the state of Oklahoma and, and the wildlife department about how can we assure that, uh, again, that they're protecting the state, we're protecting our reservation and working together so that everybody, the whole economy, the whole environment is protected and so on. I mean, I think that's just who we are. Uh, but also, I know with this type of time frame that we have and us taking it on new, there's going to be some risks that the, the state's even going to maybe try to exercise 
power and authority over us. If you're following our Choctaw Nation code out there and you're following those requirements and they try to take your vehicle, take your tackle, try to take your gun or whatever the case may be, they do not have that authority. That falls within the sovereignty of the Choctaw Nation. We will help you as a tribal member defend that. So if that happens, I'm just trying to get the message out there that we, we will be there. And But understand that there is that risk though, no matter what. And we can't go out there, and I hope we don't have tribal members. I mean, my encouragement to our tribal members is please don't go out there and do things out of the limit. So if you get caught with too many deer, if you get caught with too many fish, like you were joking about earlier, yeah. then that's gonna help the state go, look, they can't manage, they can't control, they can't they can't protect wildlife, they can't be good conservationists because they're not even making their own people live up to a standard. So when we're out there, we want favorable interactions with, with game wardens. And I think that'll happen for the most part. But, you know, if the fish are biting really good, we need to know what our bag limit is on that day. Sure. Um, so you still think there's opportunities for us to work with the state? Very much so. I mean, I, I still think that I always believe cool heads prevail. I mean, and I think common sense, you still move forward with common sense. I mean, yes, does Governor and I disagree about sovereignty because I don't think he recognizes our sovereignty. But if there's going to be something, like I said, that improves our tribal members and improves the community, if it's going to make our tribal members in Wright City and our, uh, you know, in the community of Wright City better and provide more opportunities for our tribal members all of them, you bet. I'm going to work with the state. I will work with them every time that they want to do something like that. I mean, that's, I feel like that's who we are as people. You know, the, the times that we, we don't, I always said we got kind of become that Tushka, that warrior, is when we're kind of put in a corner where we don't feel like that that's a cooperative relationship. But we're always, I'm always going to have the heart of trying to make sure that we keep that in perspective of making sure to help our tribal members in our communities, because without it, it's just a fight. Our sovereignty is stronger than ever. I want the Choctaw people to know we will defend their right to hunt and fish on our reservation. Until next time, Chapisa la Chiqui.